sound a little bit ignorant. What is the Board of Supervisors? What do you guys actually do? <laughs> where, do you, where do you stand in like the state senate? Well, I've been I've been uh, been there for seven years, so I understand uh, the, the county very well. Let me let me give you a, a, a big picture of the county. The county is about five point two billion dollar budget. If we were a corporation, we'd be a Fortune five hundred company. We have about eighteen thousand employees. We're the third largest employer in the county, second only to the Walt Disney Company. So we're a big company. We have a lot of buying power. We have a lot of hiring power. We administer roughly the $5.2 billion, but a little known fact is we only have about 12% of that budget is discretionary. So the Board of Supervisors only has control of about $670 million, give or take. And we distribute that money to 26 other agencies. The county's made up of 26 agencies. You know, you got the DA, you got RDMP, you got SSA, HCA, the libraries, healthcare agency, all, all these different agencies, and we distribute the money and the resources. The money comes from the politicians in Sacramento. We get it, and we distribute it to the county. Now, we don't get our fair share, I'll tell you that right now, because they, we, we constantly, constantly give more money out of Orange County than we bring back. The numbers are really easy. One of the things I would do as a Board of Supervisors, I'd lobby Sacramento and Washington to, to make sure that we get more of our fair share back in Orange County, because I'm a county manager. I run an agency for a living. I know the money we get back versus the money we give. So the Board of Supervisors, there's five of us. I, I would be responsible, the, the, the first district is Santa Ana Garden Grove, Westminster, any issues coming here. The issue is this though, we have to be very careful about the, the, who you choose as a supervisor. Garden Grove doesn't need firefighters or police officers. They have their own. Santa Ana has their own police officers and firefighters. Westminster has their own police officers and firefighters. We have to be very careful about how we allocate funds and, and who's you know who's behind us and who's not behind us. So you gotta be very cognizant of who is contributing campaigns and who's not contributing campaigns. Because the County of Orange only administers West, uh, Midway City and pockets. We don't control any parks in Garden Grove, we don't control any any schools in Garden Grove, anything like that. We control social services, the DA's office, the treasurer tax collector, services that are across the board. So the, the, the Board of Supervisors has a very res responsible position, but we have to remember that a lot of what we control does not have, uh, is not controlled by, is controlled by the city. We don't, we don't have control over police and fire for incorporated cities. We have control over the Sheriff's Department for unincorporated areas, like Midway City, Cota de Casa, Rossmore. Um, one, of the, one, of my, one of my duties as, as assistant director is I'm responsible for the code enforcement section of the entire county. And I tell you, it's not very efficient, ladies and gentlemen. I've got guys cruising around, my, my team are cruising around in, in Crown Victorias. They get a call, I gotta send them out to Rossmore, and then they got, I gotta send them out clear across to Cota de Casa. And they gotta waste all that time and energy and fuel with nothing in between. So one of the things I want to do is I want to encourage us getting rid of the county pockets. They don't make any sense. You know, especially in Midway City. It's the Anaheim, West Anaheim Island. It's surrounded by Anaheim. Yet if, if a resident in that island calls the police, he or she's got to wait for the Sheriff's Department. When there could be a unit two blocks over. That's not efficient government. That's one of the things that I'm going to take is seven years experience in the county and make things like that happen and change things like that. I hope that answered your question. Thank you. Uh, you know, that's an excellent question uh, because there are lots of folks that wonder what the Board of Supervisors does here because they don't see their impact. They don't see a difference in their lives depending upon what the Board does. And I, and I think Carlos did a good job sort of outlining the, the formal responsibilities of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, but there's some informal responsibilities. And one of those informal responsibilities is ensuring that we do get our fair share of resources, however that occurs. Uh, Carlos mentioned that, that Garden Grove has enough firefighters and police officers. Well, I don't agree with that at all. In fact, if you ask the fire chief, you'll find out you have about the same number of firefighters a day as you did 20 years ago. And the population of Garden Grove has increased dramatically. And the tasks assigned to firefighters have increased. They're not just guys putting out fires. They're doing hazardous materials, they're doing all sorts of things today. And so, well, I'll tell you what, let me, let me just finish and then I'll let you clarify. Um, and so, my responsibility is to bring additional resources. Now, um, 
Carlos had also mentioned a moment ago that it's now virtually the entire Board of Supervisors that's endorsed it, I think. Um, save Pat Bates, and perhaps she's going to do the same. Um, I am different. I view my role differently. I, I'm not going to be an echo of the Board of Supervisors. I'm not going to be the same guys that are there now. I'm going to be different. If you think we've got enough resources here in this part of the county, then you should go ahead with the status quo. If you think things are going great with respect to all aspects of, of what county government's doing, then you should say, listen, we love it. We want more of the same, and, and we should go with who the board thinks is the appropriate supervisor. But if you want somebody who, starting in 1987, was fighting for you and had a different perspective and fought in a very tough environment for you, then you make a different choice and you vote for me. And in a moment, I'm going to let Carlos stand up and, and clarify that, that his answer, or, or uh, clarify my answer, as the case may be. Uh, but I want to just thank you. Um, I unfortunately have another engagement here at 1.30. So I want to thank you so much for the opportunity to come and visit with you. I am sorry, and I think Carlos probably joins me in this, in saying that, that um, there are going to be 10 count candidates on the ballot. Eight are, are still, as I'm told, actively campaigning. Um, aren't, aren't here. But, but I would ask one final thing. There's 20 days, 21 days to the election. And we want people to come to government. And we want people to come to government who have the right values, who care about all of us. But sadly, the way the process has evolved, it's evolved such that it becomes um, extremely acrimonious. And it also becomes one where you're slinging mud back and forth. And you, you won't see me sling mud in this campaign. Um, I, I want to see, I want, I want young people to aspire to hold public office. I want young people to say, this is something I want to do, I want to be a leader. And unfortunately, if we continue to participate in this sort of wallowing in the mud, then that does not we get the kind of leadership that we all deserve. So I just ask you all to hold folks accountable. Hold folks accountable for what their campaigns do and what their supporters do. So with that, I want to thank you again. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, Carolina, thank you so much. Can I borrow you? Trust me, we always need more cops and more firefighters on the streets. And I just wanted to point that out.